Hi friends, welcome to Love and Life's Journey DIY. I'm Chantel and today I'm going to take you into several Dollar Tree stores and show you some of the new items that are out for Christmas. Yes, Christmas items are already in Dollar Tree stores. So now is the time to go check out your stores and make sure you pick those things up because you know they disappear quickly. I'm also going to be sharing with you some of the DIYs that I have made with these items. So let's head into Dollar Tree and let's do some DIYs. So this first Dollar Tree store had lots of the ornaments out. I see some of my favorites here, but they did have a really big selection of them out already. They also have a good amount of the Christmas florals out. However, I know from past experience that they will be putting out a lot more. So I think they're just getting started with the florals. For those of you who like to make the wreaths with the deco mesh, they've got a lot of that out as well as a lot of the Christmas ribbon. And what a large assortment of the bottle brushes they've got this year. They have so many more colors and styles than they have ever had before. Of course, they've got lots of the kids' craft kits and wood crafting items out. And in the Dollar Tree Plus section, they have a lot of really cute items for Christmas. I love these little battery operated lanterns for $5. You can't beat this. And last year I made a Christmas lamp post using this that turned out so cute. Let me show you how I made it. For my new lamp post, I'm going to be using this five and a half by seven and a half inch piece of wood from Dollar Tree. And I also picked up a smaller piece of wood that is five and a half by five and a half inches, and it's a little bit thinner. I'm also going to be using some pieces of Velcro. I picked these hook and loop fasteners up in the uh, hardware aisle. And I'm going to be using a small piece of a scrap of a paint stir stick. I would recommend using about a one inch dowel for your post. You can pick these up at Walmart for several dollars. I happened to be at Home Depot and saw this stair baluster and I decided to upgrade mine a little bit. It was a little bit more expensive, but I think it's going to be worth it. I'm going to use some black chalk paint to paint my post and my base. And I'm going to use just some wood glue from Dollar Tree and a couple of longer screws that we just had around the house. Of course, I'll need a screw gun to screw those in. And I'm going to be using this pre-made lantern that I picked up for $5 at Family Dollar. I can't DIY this for this price. So you should be able to get one similar to this at Dollar Tree Plus or at Family Dollar. I'm going to start by sanding my wood pieces and removing the labels from them. If you have stubborn labels that don't want to come off, just use a heat tool or even a blow dryer to loosen that adhesive. And if you have any sticky residue, just run your sandpaper over the top of that and that should take care of it. I'm now going to find the center point of my wood pieces. I'm just going to do this by drawing a line uh, diagonally across the blocks both directions and then where they intersect is the center. I'm going to use a little old cutting board that I have just to protect my work surface and then I'm going to drill a hole in that center point in both pieces of wood uh, using a drill bit that's just a little bit smaller than the screws that I will be using.
Now that I have those drilled, I'm going to go ahead and paint both pieces of my wood with my black chalk paint. The larger piece of wood I am going to paint on all sides, but the smaller piece of wood I'm going to paint all sides except for just a square in the center of one of the sides. And you'll see why I'm doing that here in just a moment. Next, I'm going to cut my stair baluster or my post down because this is taller than I want it to be. And since the one end is uh, longer, that square end is longer uh, than the other, I'm just going to measure the shorter end and then I'm going to cut down the longer end to match. This made my post about 29 inches long. I would say anywhere from 24 to 30 inches is probably good. The miter box and saw is super easy to cut this with. And as always, I have all my favorite crafting tools linked in the description box below. Once I have that cut, I'm going to just sand off any rough edges. On the end that I just cut, I am going to draw my diagonal lines to find the center of my post because I need to drill a little hole in this so that my screw will go in without splitting the post. There's already a hole on the one side of this baluster, um, but if you have a dowel that doesn't have holes in it, uh, you're going to want to drill a hole in the center of each end of your dowel as well. And then I'm going to give my post a coat of black paint. I decided to use a little bit of this chiffon cream chalk paint. It's just an off-white color. And then a dry brush from Dollar Tree. Any dry paintbrush will work. And then I'm going to just dry brush over this because I wanted to bring out the details of the baluster. I felt like um, some of those got lost a little bit with it just being painted a solid black. And so I wanted the turned part of this to, to really show. And so uh, by dry brushing a little bit of paint, it highlights those edges and it also kind of gives it a little bit of a snowy look. And since I dry brushed on the post, I went back and added a little bit of dry brushing to both pieces of wood that I painted black as well. Now I'm going to attach my post to my base and I'm going to first put a little bit of wood glue on that uh, bottom of the post and then I'm going to put my screw through the base. This is the larger piece of wood and then I'm going to just line that up with the hole in the post and screw that in tightly. This was a little hard to hold on to so my hubby did help me with this and uh, you can do it by yourself, but um, having an extra set of hands is always helpful. Once the base is on, then we're going to add the smaller piece of wood to the other end. And now that the post is on the base, it's much easier to uh, drill that little hole where we marked the end of the post. So I'm just drilling that right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and screw on my smaller piece onto the top. And I'm going to do this with that side that has the unpainted square in the center facing up. So now I need a way to attach my lantern to the post that we just made. So I am going to actually add a little spacer on top of the little door that the batteries um, go inside of. And this is going to help me attach this. So I just cut a piece of this five gallon paint stir stick. And this is a perfect width. And I just cut it basically the length of that little door. And then I'm going to use some weld bond or you can use E6000, some sort of strong glue. I would not recommend using hot glue for this, but I'm going to uh, use this weld bond. And then I am going to add a little bit of hot glue just to hold it on 
while that uh, other glue is setting up. But this is going to give this a really strong bond so that it won't come off. And just a tip here, make sure that you don't get your glue inside the little battery compartment. You don't want to glue the little door shut so that you aren't able to change your batteries. And once you have this glued on, you do want to let the glue set completely uh, before you go on to the next step of putting the Velcro on this because you don't want the Velcro pulling your piece of wood off. You want this glue to be completely dry. I let my glue dry overnight so I know it's completely set and this is not going to come off. The reason I had to put this spacer in is because that battery compartment or the bottom of the lantern is um, indented. It's not flat and so I needed a way to attach it to my post. So I'm going to be using these Velcro pieces and two of these from Dollar Tree fit perfectly on here. So I'm going to place um, two of the same type of the same side of the Velcro on this and then I am going to place the other side of the Velcro pieces so that they'll attach. I'm going to put those on the lamp post where we didn't paint and this is why I didn't paint this. I wanted it to uh, stick directly down onto the wood. And since I don't want to worry about which direction I need to position the lantern on here when I put it on the base, I'm going to use four squares of the uh, Velcro so that there's a bigger surface on here. So no matter which way I, I set it on here, it's going to have plenty of surface to stick to. And it was perfect that the bottom of the lantern was exactly five and a half inches square, which is exactly what this piece of wood that I picked up at Dollar Tree was for the base. So it just worked out perfectly. The Velcro is sticking really well to both the bottom of the lantern and the wood base of the top of my post. And so it's just working out really well. So the lantern that I picked up at Family Dollar already had that greenery on the top of it. So I just went into my stash and picked out some picks from Dollar Tree that I already had and uh, found ones that I thought would go well with what was already on the lantern. And I'm removing a few of the elements from them that I don't want to use. But then I'm going to combine these two picks to create a floral uh, piece on the bottom of my lamppost. I decided that I wanted to add a few extra little pine cones and berries to this so I just dug through my stash and found some to add to it but you can use any kinds of embellishments that you want or have on hand it's just really up to you. Then I'm just going to attach all of my greenery and berries and pine cones and everything just using my hot glue gun. I decided to go ahead and just take some white craft paint and just uh, add a little bit of snow in little patches all along the lantern and uh, that I think this just really gives it that winter um, Christmas look and uh, gives it a little more uh, depth and dimension and I also added a little bit to the pine cones and greenery that are on it as well because if it were outside and it were snowing uh, snow would get on that as well and since i added the snow to the lantern i'm also going to add a little bit to the greenery and the pine cones and the berries that i added to the bottom of the lamp post just to tie it all together Since the ribbon on the top of the lantern was just a plain red, I kind of wanted to keep with that. And I found this ribbon at Walmart. It was, I think, like $2.68 for this roll. And it's not quite the same color, but I'm okay with that. It doesn't have to be like matchy-matchy. I love using wired ribbon for this. And so I'm just going to loop my ribbon back and forth. And I'm going to make four loops on each side with one in the center to finish it off. 
And since I always forget to get something to tie my bow off with, I put a clamp on it and then I am going to use some wire and just wrap that around the bow tightly and uh, secure that. And then I will just fluff out those loops on my bow to give it a nice full look. Then I'm going to leave some fairly long tails on my bow because I want them to hang down on the lamp post. I did leave the wire that I tied the bow off with uh, long enough that I could use it to tie the bow onto the lamp post, but you could also just attach the bow using some hot glue. So here is the finished lamp post and that $5 lantern from Dollar Tree Plus just made this such an easy project and I love how it looks. And since I had to make it removable to be able to turn the light off and on and change the batteries, then you can also remove it and use it like in a centerpiece like I have here. And so it just makes it really versatile. And I love how it looks um, on my table here, but I also love it as a lamp post. In the ornament section, you want to keep your eye open for these really cute corrugated cardboard pine cone ornaments. I get so many compliments on those. And you also want to watch for these little metal sleigh ornaments. These are great for doing DIYs with. Let me show you a couple I've done. For this, you'll need a window lid tin from Dollar Tree. And you can also get these at uh, Walmart and I think I've seen them at uh, Michaels. I also am going to use a sleigh ornament again. I just really like these little sleigh ornaments from Dollar Tree. And also some of the little trees that they had in a two-pack and they come in white or green. You'll need some type of filler for the bottom. Uh, I'm going to be using this uh, shimmering filler that I got last year at Hobby Lobby or you could use the faux snow but that might be a little messy for this project so maybe something like a uh, fiber fill uh, would work well for this too. I'm also using one of these uh, LED white lights from Dollar Tree and a package of these glitter snowflake stickers. For tools, you'll need a hot glue gun and glue sticks, some painter's tape, a razor or safety knife, some acrylic paint, and a paintbrush. First, you'll want to remove the lid from your tin, and we're going to need to cut a hole in the back side of the tin using the razor knife. You could probably also use a drill for this and just drill uh, through the back side. We just need a hole for the lights to go through. So you just want to very carefully poke through the tin and I'm just going to cut out a little square um, in the back of the tin. Then I'm going to take some painter's tape. You could use probably duct tape or masking tape just something that you can cut little strips of and put through the hole and tape over the sharp edges so that um, that you don't get cuts or so that um, it doesn't cut the wires for your lights as well. Next, I'm going to take some acrylic paint and this is in a midnight blue color and I'm just going to paint the bottom of the inside of the tin and I chose this color because I wanted it to look kind of like a dark night. And I did have to do two coats of paint on this to get it to cover the uh, bottom of the tin all the way and you'll see that second coat here in just a minute. While that first coat of paint is drying I'm going to uh, get my little sleigh ready and I wanted to just do a red and white so I'm going to remove the little decoration that's on the sleigh for now and I'm going to use these little red packages 
that I took off of some uh, Christmas picks that I got from Dollar Tree. And since I want to do white and red and silver, I'm exchanging the gold bow that was on there with a silver uh, string that I had just to uh, make it all kind of coordinate better. Once the first coat of paint is dry, I'm going to go in over the top of that with a second coat. And I'm using a little bit of a lighter color. Um, I decided that that first color was just a little bit too dark. So I'm using a little bit lighter of a blue. I think it's called Uniform Blue by Ceramicoat. But it's just something I had on hand. You can just pick up any kind of acrylic paint or craft paint um, at Walmart. And um, I'm leaving a little bit of uh, streaking on this second coat so that the darker uh, paint shows through a little bit uh, just to give it a little more dimension. So then I'm going to let that paint dry all of the way and then I decided I wanted to give it a little bit of sparkle so I had this glitter spray uh, that I had gotten a long time ago that I decided to spray a little bit on there. That step is totally optional and you don't need to to do that if you don't want to or, or if you don't have that on hand. Now we're going to put the lights on and we're going to glue the little battery pack to the bottom of the back side of the tin. And you want to make sure that you have the side that opens facing out so that you'll be able to change the batteries when you need to. So I'm just going to add some hot glue to the other side of it and stick it directly to the tin. And then you'll just need to thread the lights, the string of lights, through that hole that we cut um, into the inside of the tin so that we can attach those. Once you have the light string pulled all the way through the hole in the tin, then we're just going to bring it up to the top edge of the tin and start gluing it around the edge. And I just put a little dab of glue and stick the wire in it and I'm gluing where the lights are. That seemed to be the easiest place to glue that string of lights and it doesn't seem to affect the way the lights look or work. Once you've gone around the inside of the tin once, you're going to want to take your wire and just make a little fold in it so that your second round of lights will be offset from the first one so that you don't have uh, two lights in the same place and this will make the lighting more even in your tin. So now it's time to assemble the scene inside of our little tin and I've chosen a white tree and then of course my little sled that I got ready and then I've decided I'm going to use the filler that I got at Hobby Lobby last year and so I'm just going to pull out and decide how much of that I want to use and um, before I actually put that in the tin I'll want to glue my tree inside the tin. Then I can place my filler inside the tin and kind of wrap it around the base of the tree. And I'm going to uh, glue my packages inside of the little sleigh since I didn't do that before. And then I'll put the sleigh inside the tin and uh, just secure it with a little glue as well so it doesn't slide around inside there. Then I'm going to take several of my little snowflake uh, glittered stickers that from Dollar Tree and just stick them on the back of the tin and uh, there is a little bit of a trick 
that I like to use just to make it look uh, a little more interesting and that is to uh, cut one of the snowflakes in half and then I'll just use that half and place it right up against the top um, of the of the the tin and that way um, it just uh, looks a little more um, complete I think so I decided I wanted to cover up those two little holes that were showing in the sleigh where I removed the original embellishment and I wanted to stick with the white and red theme so I just made a little white bow out of the a, a scrap of ribbon and then just added a few little berries that I had as well just to finish that off I decided after the fact that I wanted to put a ribbon or a bow on the top of this uh, Christmas diorama so I'm just making a bow out of some uh, white ribbon that I had and I'm just looping it back and forth um, this ribbon is not wired and so I'm um, making more layers in the bow just to make it a little fuller since it it won't hold its shape um, by itself as well as wired ribbon would. Once I have as many layers as I want then I'm just going to take another piece of the ribbon and uh, put it through the, the bow around it and just tie it in a knot to secure it together. Then you just spread your loops out and kind of fluff up your bow until it looks uh, how you want it to look. And I couldn't wait to see what it looked like with the light on. So here I have the little lights on inside and it looks so cute. But I'm just going to wrap the white ribbon around the uh, outside of the tin one time and just glue it uh, with my hot glue gun just at the top to secure it. And then I'm just going to add my bow at the very top and then it will be finished. Another project I did with the sleigh is this snow globe inspired candle holder. And most of these items you'll be able to find um, even if your Dollar Tree is picked over. The items that I used for this is this plastic container and you want to get the one with the white lid like this. And then you'll also want one of these round vases and this can be found in just the aisle with all the vases. And then you want to make sure that the vase fits on top of the lid of the container like this. You will need some type of ornament or decoration that fits inside the vase. I'm using this diamond wrap, but you could also just use some type of ribbon. You'll need some faux snow and you can get this um, at Dollar Tree or probably at craft stores or maybe even Walmart. And then a small votive candle holder and a candle. Uh, this is just a candle I had on hand, but you could also pick up um, a small uh, LED candle from the Dollar Tree. You also need a dryer sheet and some scissors and a hot glue gun with some glue sticks. I'm using Gorilla Glue Stick. And you may need some scotch tape depending on what you decide to put in your snow globe. First, you just want to remove the lid from your container and then take a dryer sheet and wipe out the inside of your vase to help remove any static and then also on the top of the lid. Then we're going to put our ornament or decoration inside the vase. Um, I'm having to do mine a little bit different because I was planning to just glue it to the top of the lid and then put the vase over the top but as you can see that was not going to work. So I had to insert my ornament into the vase first and then I'm going to have to use a little trick to, um, to secure it. But I'm going to add my snow, my faux snow into the vase and I've just pre-measured some out and I'm pouring it in there. And then 
I'm going to use some ribbon and you could use string or fishing twine or any kind type of yarn or anything um, for this um, and I'm just going to cut about a foot long piece of this and then I'm going to string it through the rungs of the little sleigh ornament and then use that ribbon to pull the ornament up to the top of the vase so that it's flush with the top of the vase and and then I'm just going to tape the ribbon down tightly on the outsides of the vase to hold it in place and this way um, it will hold the sleigh ornament up to the top of the vase so that I can actually secure it to the lid um, and and hold it in place next I'm just going to add some hot glue to the rungs at the place where they touch the base uh, and because the sleigh is too big the the rungs don't fully sit flush against the base so I just put glue on the back then I'm holding the lid on until the glue sets up a little bit. Then I can just remove the tape and slide the ribbon right out. So here you can see where I glued uh, the rungs and it's just in the one place at the very back where they touch the base. Next I'm going to squeeze a little bit of hot glue in uh, around the base where the glass and the base are touching and uh, this way it'll help secure it all the way around. Then I'm going to glue some of this red diamond wrap around the base just to dress it up a little bit. And then I just need to add the candle on the top and I, I wanted to go ahead and glue the votive holder onto the snow globe so uh, you could use E6000 uh, because I have Gorilla Glue sticks in my glue gun. I just went ahead and used that and so I just secured that to the top and then you just put the candle in the top and it's finished. I'm also seeing another one of my favorite ornaments. It's these tree ornaments. They come in a two pack. They also have them in the reindeer and the stars, but I made a really fun DIY using the trees. For this first project, I will be using this house shelf to make a really cute winter decor piece. So I'm going to also be using these two uh, tree ornaments that I picked up at Dollar Tree and these come in a two pack for a dollar. I'm going to start off by using some midnight blue acrylic craft paint and I am going to paint the front of my house shelf with this paint. And actually I paint the sides and the back too just to give it a nice finished look but I don't paint the the shelf part. I'm going to leave that white. So as you can see, it's going to take a couple coats of paint to cover up the design on this. So I'm using my heat gun to uh, dry this coat of paint because I'm very impatient. And uh, you just want to be careful not to get the heat gun too close to this because it will cause it to bubble up if you do. Um, and then I'm going to add a second coat of paint once that's completely dry. The top of the shelf has a really nice white finish on it. I'm just going to leave that alone and I'm going to take some white paint and just go around the edges of it. And the only white white paint that I had was this uh, paint from Dollar Tree. It works okay but it's not my favorite. It does take uh, several coats to cover where I think a chalk paint or something would probably have only needed to do one or maybe two coats. I think I had to do four coats with this. 
Next I'm going to take an old stiff toothbrush and I'm going to dip it in the white paint and then I'm going to just use my thumb to flick the bristles so that it splatters white paint onto the blue and this is going to make it look like snow. I love this technique. It's super fun. If you haven't tried it before, you might want to practice before you do it on your project, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to do. Next I'm going to take my tree ornaments and on one of them I'm going to actually cut it down a little bit. I'm going to be using my miter shears. I love this tool. These are great. My favorite crafting tools are all linked down below this video. You can use this to cut things at an angle or straight uh, and it will cut like through dowels and things like that. And it works great for cutting this. I just want to cut this down to make it shorter. Uh, because I want my two trees to be two different heights. On the other tree, I'm only going to cut off just a teeny tiny amount at the very bottom just because it is at an angle and I want it to be straight across so that it is flat for gluing to my project. I'm also going to add one of these Let It Snow Wood Words from Dollar Tree to my project. And so I'm going to be painting that white. And instead of using that paint from Dollar Tree, I decided to use an acrylic paint marker uh, that I had from Arteza. So I let that dry and then I decided to add some of this sparkle glaze just to the little snowflake on here just to make it stand out a little bit more. And so uh, this sparkle glaze you can get at uh, any craft store and I've probably had this bottle for like 10 years and it's still half full. It's not dried out. It works great. So it's worth the investment. I've used it a lot uh, because uh, just a little goes a long way. But it adds just a little bit more um, of an accent and it uh, just kind of elevates the project a little bit. The tree ornaments have a little hole in the top so that you can hang them. However, I don't want to have a hole in the top for this project. So I am going to just put a little bit of hot glue inside that hole. And I'm putting on a metal ruler because when the hot glue goes through, then uh, once it sets up, it just pops right off of that ruler. Uh, whereas if you did it on your table, it would pretty much just be stuck to your table. And so you could use wood filler for this, but I wanted something that would dry quickly, so I'm using hot glue. Once the hot glue is set up, I'm going to paint that with some white paint so it blends in with the tree. And then because these trees already have kind of a glitter on them, I'm going to add a little bit of the sparkle glaze over the top where I painted those holes. And that will just make it blend in and you won't even notice it. Now I'm going to attach my trees to my project and because the only point of contact is that very bottom of the trunk of the tree, I'm going to use some E6000 on that very bottom and then I am going to kind of go around the base of the tree using my hot glue and this is going to um, help hold it on while that E6000 sets up. It will make kind of a little mound around the tree, but we're going to paint that and um, it will just kind of disappear. So once the hot glue is completely set up on um, this taller tree that I put towards the back, I'm going to go ahead and paint that using my white paint. And uh, again, I put a couple of coats on this to cover it up. I just thought it would be easier to paint this before I put the second tree on. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and add the second tree, the shorter one. I'm going to um, put it on the same way and I'm going to put it a little bit further forward and more toward the center. And I have to say I'm really loving how these white trees just pop against that blue background. So now I'm going to add some sparkle glaze to the white shelf part so that this all looks like fallen snow. I want it to kind of match the trees with that sparkle on it. And so I'm going to just add a, a couple coats of the sparkle glaze and I'm also making sure that I get it on the hot glue that is around the tree trunks as well. And to finish it off, I'm going to use some hot glue and glue on the Let It Snow. This is really pretty just like this, but look how amazing it looks with this LED candle that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I just love this so much. For this project, I will be using this wood signboard from Hobby Lobby. The regular price on it is $4.49, but I got it 40% off, so it was like $2.75, and it's all ready to go with a hanger and everything. I'm also going to be using these tree ornaments from Dollar Tree. They come in a two-pack, so I purchased two packages, but I'm only going to be using three of these trees. I'm going to be using a little bit of wired ribbon. This is one that I picked up at Walmart in their Christmas section. And I will be using one of these little snowflake ornaments from this package from Dollar Tree. It comes with six on it. I'm just going to be using one. I'm going to be using this sign just the way it is. I'm not going to add any paint or anything to it. So this DIY is super quick and easy. I'm going to take my little trees and they do have a hole in the top because they are meant to be ornaments and I want to fill that in so that's what I'm going to do first. To do this I'm going to be using some hot glue and some white craft paint and then either some sparkle glaze or a little bit of glitter. This is a really fine glitter that I had from Stamping Up that is called Sparkling Diamonds and that's actually the one I'm going to be using. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a metal surface underneath those holes on the trees and I'm just doing this because I'm going to fill the holes with hot glue and I don't want the hot glue to stick to uh, the surface below and a metal surface it doesn't stick to, it just pops right off. So I'm carefully filling the holes with a little bit of hot glue and then I'm holding it in place until the glue sets up a little bit and then when I pull it off of the metal ruler then it's all set and ready to paint. And I'll just repeat that with the other two ornaments. Now we need to cover up that hot glue with a little bit of the white craft paint so I'm just going to uh, carefully go over that and try to make it blend in with the ornament and then while the paint is still wet I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of that glitter over the top and that's why I decided to use the glitter instead of the sparkle glaze because if I were going to use the sparkle glaze I would have to wait for my paint to dry but this way I can just sprinkle the glitter over the top of the wet paint. Now I'm going to position my trees on my wood sign and I had thought about just using two trees and then putting some type of saying or word on that right hand side but 
I decided, you know, not every sign has to have words or a saying, and I just liked the simplicity of this with just the trees. So that's what I'm doing, and as you can see here, I'm placing the ornaments that are in, on each side actually over the top of the frame, and then the one in the center is just on the center piece and not overlapping the frame. And to secure these, I just used a little bit of hot glue. I love how adding the trees on the top of the frame it just adds so much dimension. Now you could leave it just like this, but I decided to use some ribbon and make just a simple bow to add to the hanger. So I am just creating a loop with my ribbon and securing that with a little hot glue. And then I am going to set that on top of another piece of ribbon and then just cut off the length that I want. Once I trim off that bottom piece, I am going to trim the ends of it to uh, just add a little dovetail effect on it. And then I'll just put my loop back on top of this piece of ribbon and tie it off in the center tightly so that it kind of squishes it in the middle and gives it that nice shape. And uh, I'm going to use just a piece of jute twine. You could use floral wire, even a bread tie, just something to uh, to uh, hold it together. And you do want it to look nice though because it does kind of show. Then I'm going to take my little snowflake ornament and I'm going to hot glue that on top of my ribbon. And once I determine where I want to place the bow, I'll just hot glue that to that jute twine hanger. If you are a regular subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you like DIYs on a budget and Dollar Tree DIYs, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell right next to it and set your notifications so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. This next Dollar Tree, which is one of my favorites, I found some completely different things, including these large Christmas trees. They had a three and a half foot pre-lit green tree for $10. However, it only has about 35 lights on it. They also had a four foot unlit tree in either white or green, and it was only $5. So in my opinion, probably the $5 tree is going to be a better value. And I wanted to see if it was even worth $5 because you never know. So it comes with a plastic stand. It just has these three legs that fit inside the bottom. It's really easy to slide together. And it seemed really sturdy. And so then you just start bending the branches down and kind of fluffing it up. And honestly, I was pretty impressed with how full this tree ended up being for just $5. Since the three and a half foot tree was $10, but it only had 35 lights on it, I think that would look pretty bare. I think this tree is a much better value at just $5. It's taller and you can add your own lights to it. And I'm really impressed with it. I just wanted to show you um, what it looked like and I didn't spend a lot of time fluffing it up but I did want to let you know that if you see those at your Dollar Tree store they're definitely worth the five dollars. Some other things I found at this store were these flocked little bottle brush trees. I really like these. They also had the large uh, plastic crafting ornaments and uh, they have them in the round balls, and then they also have these that are more flat. I really like those for crafting. 
and a new product I found. These would be great gifts for those kids that are crafty in your life, but they had some uh, craft kits or bracelets or uh, some embroidery kits. They also had some little macrame kits and some paint by numbers. So these would be really fun and uh, I think kids would really like these. This store has some great things in the Dollar Tree Plus aisle. These large baskets for $5 are really nice. I mean, look at the size of these. These would be great for making gift baskets to give away and to use in home decor as well. They had a ton of really pretty jar candles for three and five dollars and lots of different scents. Some of them I really liked and others not so much, but that's kind of a personal preference. But I thought these were really, really pretty. Another thing this store had was these metal lanterns. This style of lantern is really popular and they had a smaller size for $3, a larger size for $5. This is over 14 inches tall. I picked up several of these and in my next video we are going to be using these for DIYs. So make sure you are subscribed and have your notifications turned on. They also have some really nice size glass vases. I really love this clear glass vase and I'm gonna take that home and I'm going to uh, show you how you can style that using some of these ornaments from Dollar Tree. They have them in all different sizes and uh, mostly just golds and silvers and reds. Uh, I do like that kind of champagne gold color and so I picked up some of those and uh, we're gonna do some DIYs with that vase. $5 for this vase is such a great deal. It's about 12 inches tall and I think six or eight inches wide. And I looked up one on Amazon for the same size, it was about $20, so this is a great deal. I'm going to first add an LED candle that I got at Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to use some of those smaller ornaments that I picked up in the gold and the red, and just place those around the candle, um, about halfway up the candle. And I found just a few sprigs of greenery that I had left over from projects. I always save these. And uh, this is a perfect example of when you might use them. I just took several of them and pushed them down kind of in the ornaments. And uh, it just adds that extra touch uh, to kind of finish this off. Another way you can style this is to take some of those small ornaments that we just used and instead of having the candle in there, we're going to add more ornaments, this time using some of the medium and the larger ones as well. This is so easy because you basically just fill the vase up using the random sized ornaments and I didn't go quite to the top, but I just think this is really simple and pretty. Of course, if you wanted to dress it up a little bit more, you could add some of these LED fairy lights from Dollar Tree. And these are just the silver wire lights. And I'm going to just place that battery pack right down in the center of my ornaments uh, so that it's hidden. And then I'll place my lights, just kind of pushing them down randomly around the ornaments. And this is really pretty because the lights not only reflect off of the ornaments, but off of the glass, and it just gives it a really pretty glow. Now I'm going to take it one step further, and I'm going to put my lights down in the center and start adding some of my ornaments. And then I'm going to use some of these pine cones and berries that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And they have a little bit of the gold glitter on them. 
and I'm going to just use pieces of this and add the pine cones and berries and a little bit of the greenery in this as well. I really like the mix of the kind of elegant, shiny ornaments and lights with the kind of rusticness of the pine cones and the evergreen and the berries. And I just think this really makes it look very high end. And the best thing about it is it cost me less than $12 to make. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the Christmas items that are out in Dollar Tree stores now and some of the projects and ideas uh, that I have shown you in this video. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, then hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out. And don't forget to hit the bell to set your notifications so YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day.